Hi everyone, it's Lindy Yan from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I'm going to show you a fun, easy spotlight technique. And that's just where we're going to highlight just a section of the image, especially if there's a lot of coloring to do. This is a really easy way just to do some simple coloring. You don't have to color in the entire image. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. So let's grab the image we're going to be using. We're going to be using this Queen of Craft. This is a stamp set from Art Impressions. And look how cute this is. This little lady with all her craft supplies all around her. We're also going to use the sentiment and that little cluster of paint brushes. And then we have the coordinating die for that larger image. And then it also comes with this additional little die that says Crafty. I'm using the steel die cutters that are being carried by Art Impressions, and I will list and link those down below, along with all the other products I'm using today. Now I've got my sticky mat, my Misty sticky mat inside my Misty stamp positioner. Let's go ahead and place that stamp down. I'm using Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and for ink, I'm using the Stazon Jet Black ink. I'm quickly prepping that stamp with my hand just to take off any film that might be on there since it is a rather large image. I've not used it before, so it's a good idea just to kind of rub it with your hands. And then I can go ahead and stamp that, and I'm using my Stampendable Stamp Press to press that out. Now we will be stamping this a second time. We need two of these to do the spotlight technique that I'm, that I'm using today. So let's go ahead and stamp this again. So let's go ahead and cut this down using the Art Impressions nested square dies. Let's get started by grabbing that second largest die. I'll go ahead and tape that down with a little bit of post-it tape just to make sure that's nice and straight and lined up perfectly. And then I'll run that through the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine. Now for the spotlight section, we're going to use the nested oval dies. I'm going to grab that third smallest one. And then I'm just going to select the area that I want to spotlight. And I'm going to tape that down with some post-it tape. So I definitely want to include this little lady in the spotlight. So let's go ahead and run these through the die cutting machine. And now you can see that that is going to sit right over top of that full size image. So the only coloring we need to do is on this smaller piece. Now I'm start, I started off with sugared almond pink on the cheeks and then I'm using the flesh color for her skin. And what I'm going to do is lay this indexing right in front of me. This will give me all the details that I need. It's a little hard to tell sometimes what you're coloring in. So if you just lay this in front of you, sometimes it's just a little bit easier to see where you need to do your coloring. Now this is a great idea for those of you who don't love to color. Any large image, you could do this with a large floral background or just a large patterned image, just select an area of that that you want to color in. So you can keep the coloring fairly limited and a lot quicker and easier to do. And hopefully you've noticed as we're going along, I have the colors listed in the upper left hand corner. And for the markers, I'm using the Zig Clean Color Bill Brush Pens, and these are a water-based pen. And to do my blending, I'm using the Blender Pen. So here I'm adding the yellow and the orange just for a little shadowing and I'll just pull those colors together towards the center. And here I've got turquoise green, orange, and lilac. And then I'm switching to the beige. Now a little bit later on in the coloring you'll see that I I'll stop putting the colors up there once I start repeating those colors over and over again. So I'll use these same colors to fill in all of these areas. So again, as we go along, 
when you don't see me listing the colors anymore, you know it's just a repeat of a color that we've already used. This technique I find very simple. I know a lot of people say to me, oh, that coloring is just too much, it's too small, or it's very detailed. This, I think, would be fun to color in the entire image. But for those of you who don't really love to do that, I thought I would give you an option. This is a nice, easy option. And again, this works really well with a lot of your larger images, especially the background images, where you can just pop out one little section of that background and make it the star of the show. And that's what we're gonna do with this. For her hair, I used yellow and beige. I'm just shadowing a little bit with that beige color, just to tone down that yellow a little bit. And for the background, I thought it would be fun to do a paint spatter background. We're going to be using this really cute stencil from Lawn Fawn. And we're gonna do that all over the background in the same colors that we're using to color in the images. And also, if you stay to the very end, I'll show you that I created a matching envelope for this as well with that paint spatter background. So it's really going to be fun and colorful. And I'm sure this is a card that would, your crafty friends would love. They could even frame it and keep it out because it's just so cute. It'd be great for a little craft room. We're going to be mounting this onto an A2 size card. But what would be really fun if it was a gift for a crafty friend is to mount it onto a piece of cardboard or a couple of layers of cardstock and then put a little easel back on it. And that would make a great little craft room decoration. So that's, that's another possibility with this, which I think your crafty friends would really love. So now you can see, I'm just starting to repeat all the colors that we used before. So I'm just kind of filling in those open areas. And I do have to say, it really helps having that little index next to me, especially when you're doing this spotlight technique, because it's sometimes difficult to tell what those little edges are what those pieces are. So keeping that handy will really help you keep referencing that and it makes it a lot easier to fill this in. Now you do wanna clean your blender pen off in between colors. If you're changing colors, just scribble it onto your scrap paper until it goes clear and then you know that it's clean to go to your next image. And as I said earlier, all of the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. So now you can see we finished up that coloring and that is going to sit right over top of that image that we already stamped. So let's go ahead and create the card base. This will be again the A2 size top folding card so it'll measure four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to open this up and place it on my Wendy Becky Make Art Station. We're going to do that stenciling with that paint splatter stencil that I mentioned before. And I've got some post-it tape and I'm lining that up right above the score line. Now that tape I've used before, I am kind of frugal with the tape, so I just cleaned it off and I'm using it for this project. Here is that beautiful paint splatter background from Lawn Fawn. And I'm just going to line this up on my card. I do want it to look like it's going off the edges of the card, so I'm pulling it up a little bit higher. And then we'll use the squeezed lemonade distress oxide ink to start with our first color. And I am going to be using a little sponge dauber just so that I can get into these smaller areas without having to mask anything off. I didn't want to do any masking here. I just wanted to do a quick background. And then I'm switching over to the milled lavender and all of the inks I'm using today will be the Distress Oxide inks from Tim Holtz. And again, I'm just coordinating these colors with the colors that we used in the image. I've got the Kitsch Flamingo. And I'm just kind of pouncing it on and then pushing that ink around a little bit. Again, I'm trying to avoid 
too much overlapping into the other little paint spatters, but it certainly doesn't matter if you do overlap. I've got the Twisted Citron. And this Make Art Station is really great because the magnets are just holding this in place for me. You could also use your Pixie Spray if you wanted to. Just spray the back of your stencil It'll give it kind of a tacky finish, and then you can easily just place your stencil down and it won't move around at all. And then that orangey color was the ripe persimmon, and now I'm going to go back and repeat some of the colors that we already used. And now I've got the salvage patina. Now let's go ahead and remove that stencil and you can already see how cute this is. I just love this stencil. And now I'm going to just kind of pick and choose where I want the rest of these little paint spatters to be. So I'm just going to use little sections of this stencil and then I'll move it again and fill in any open areas. So I'm back to the salvage patina. Now, I did decide to clean this off so that I don't transfer any of that ink anywhere else. And I think I've told you in some past videos that my new way of cleaning these is to put a towel down, then spritz the stencil with water, and then place another towel over the top and wipe off any of that excess ink. And I have to say, I know it sounds silly to say, but it's amazing that it just cleans it so quickly and easily. And I don't have that mess I used to have. I used to lay the stencil flat on my glass media mat, spritz it with water, and then it would get wet underneath, and I would have to keep flipping it back and forth to clean it off. This is just so quick. You lay a towel down, place your stencil on there, spritz it with water, and pat it dry with a second towel. And again, I, it's the simple thing sometimes, but it really works well, and it's easy to do. And then here I'm going to go back to that milled lavender. And again, I'm just trying to fill in some of those little open spots. And just a couple more little dots in that upper left hand corner and the upper right hand corner. And now I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and remove that post-it tape and look at this. This, is, this you could just put a sentiment on this card without anything else. And I think that would be adorable. Well, let's go ahead. I did decide that that die was a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to cut this again using the next smallest die. So that would be the third largest die in that set. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this down just a little bit because I do want to create a couple layers behind it. So now let's take the, the, the two largest dies from this set and for our layering. And I'm going to be using the Lawn Fawn Textured Dot Cardstock in the pastels. You can see it has that really pretty dotted pattern on it. I've got the lime green and the bright pink, and then I've got my Lawn Fawn Jumbo Glue Tube, and I'm going to go ahead and glue these together. And that's what's great about this square die set. It gives you all the different sizes. There's so many different sizes in it that you really can create these nice, thin borders around your layers, and I love that. So now let's center that at the top of the card. I'm just having an equal distance between the top and the two sides. We can go ahead and place this piece down. But first, let's grab some of that pink and just sponge a little bit of a shadow all the way around. This will just kind of bring our eyes into the center of the image. Just finishes off those edges a little bit better.
Now we can glue this into place. And again, those layering dies are going to give us a perfect layer distance between each of those, which is about an eighth of an inch, I want to say. This is a great way to create frames, too, with these dies. You can create some really pretty frames. So now I've got my spotlight image. Let's go ahead and pop that up with some foam dots or foam squares. And then I'm using my Cricut weeding tool to pull the backing off. It's got a little pokey end on it, so I'm just pushing it down into those the backing on the tape and just pulling those off. And now we can go ahead and line this right back up with the image underneath. And it does take a minute or two to get this lined up properly. So I spent a little time making sure that was lined up nice and straight. And now we can go ahead and die cut our sentiment. Now you could use that die for the image if you wanted to. Today we're not going to be doing it, but I did want to show you again that it does come with this set. So I started off cutting out the crafty out of some yellow cardstock. And I'm going to cut three extras out of some white heavyweight cardstock to layer behind this. But after I cut this out, I thought, well, let me die cut a pink and a lavender one as well. And then I can decide which one I like best. And I can certainly save those extra ones for another project. So here you can see I've got the three colors and I'm just going to test out those colors. So any of these would work. I did come to the conclusion that I like the pink one the best, but that's probably just me because I love pink. So I'm going to now just layer up those three extras. Again, going back to that glue tube, I'm putting little tiny dots of glue on here. And then we'll take a little bit of time to make sure we line these up. I like to use my tweezers, just kind of wrap the tweezer on either side of the letters and then I can just make sure that it's lined up really well. That's just a little trick that works for me. Kind of pushes things right into place for you. So I was going to put it down below the image and then I decided I wanted it right here on this square. So I'll add a little bit of glue And this will pop up a little bit on its own because now it, it is four layers of cardstock. So it's going to have a nice dimension to it. I'm just centering that. I've got some Baker's Twine in pink and white. This is a pale pink and white. I'm wrapping it around about three times. I'm going to tie this. Then I'll use my reverse tweezers just to hold that in place for me while I tie the bow. It acts as a little bit of a clamp, gives you an extra set of hands so that you can just tie a nice little bow. I'll just play with that for a second or two and then I'll just cut off those ends. Now I am going to color one other little section of the image, just that little heart. It's on that little chalkboard. I'm going to color in the heart and then I'm going to add a heart over top. And these are from Dress My Craft. They are called the Pastel Pink Heart Droplets. And you can kind of see through them. That's why I colored in that heart behind it a little bit darker. So I'll add a little bit of glue and then we'll layer on one of those larger hearts. And then I'm adding two hearts above that. So you do get some different sizes in this set. I'm going to grab a couple of the smaller ones and pop those up above. Just to fill in that top area just a little bit better. Now I've got my Wink of Stella clear glitter pen. I'm adding a little sparkle to her crown. And then 
a couple other little areas, but I did want to add this to the word crafty. And I'll just add a nice layer of this sparkle to that, just to pop it out just a little bit more. You'll still see that pretty polka dot patterned paper showing through. And you do want to clean this pen off in between colors. Again, it is a water-based pen, so you want to make sure you scribble it onto your scrap paper before you change to the next color. Now, I've got some of these squares. I've got three different sizes of the squares for my sentiment. I've got that pink, that lime green color again, and then some white Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and run these through. And we're just repeating that layering that we used on the front of the card. This will be for the sentiment on the inside of the card. This set has some perfect sentiments for your crafty friends. One says, crafting is my therapy, and boy, that, that's the truth. And uh, we're using the one that says, happy crafter today, for the inside of the card. Excuse the mess, I craft here. One says, I can make that, or this is my happy place. Craftiness is happiness. I make pretty things. Queen of craft, and it has a little crown on the queue. And then one says, welcome to the craft room. And there's also a little set of paint brushes that we're also going to stamp. We're going to cut those out and put those right below the sentiment on the inside of the card. So let's go ahead and stamp these. I'm using that same stays on black, jet black ink that we used before. So let's just add a little bit of that light pink around the edges of our sentiment just to mimic what we did on the front of the card. And then I'll quickly color in those little paint brushes and I'll be using a detail scissors to cut that out. So you leave a little white border around the edges just to make that simple and easy to cut. Now let's go ahead and assemble these. So we're just gonna layer these up. You can place that sentiment on the inside of the card. I'm just going to center that. And then I'll take the little paint brushes and put them right below the sentiment in that lower right hand corner. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Let me give you a closer look at the finished card. And the, this little lady, this image is just so sweet and so cute. And I really hope you enjoyed the spotlight technique, something quick and easy to try. And let me give you a quick look at that coordinating envelope that just, I think, finishes off this little card. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.